Hello everybody. Our next camera is an Ansco Cadet Disc 100. It's a disc camera, so it was made sometime between 1982 and 1990. It was made by Haking in Hong Kong. It was also marketed under the Haking brand or Helena. It's fixed focus, fixed aperture, doesn't take batteries. Amazingly, it has a hot shoe. It takes what's now rare, the disc film. I already cracked this one open because I processed the film. From what I can tell, disc film was only made in ISO 200 speed. The images are tiny. They're about 8 by 10 millimeters. This camera is in fairly good shape. The little lever that opens the back uh, is broken, but doesn't really affect getting it open. Now that I said that, I can't get it open. Here's the lens and then the rotator. This mechanism here uh, opens and closes the shutter on the film cartridge. Really, camera-wise, that's about it. So I'm going to talk about the process a little bit. I used a Nikkor tank because the Yankee and uh, the other plastic ones, they need the cylinder down the middle to be light tight. This one, the light tightness is built into the lid. So I was able to take the reel out of here and just pop this little bad boy in here, process it. These were all uh, print film, C41 process. So it's pretty straightforward to do it. Um, the only funky thing was finding what to do it in. Scanning it was a little bit of a challenge. I did find out that my uh, Canon's 120 film adapter was the right width to suspend the film. It would just touch the edges. It's really, really stiff emulsion. So it would just sit there and it was the right distance from the scanner and everything. I originally tried to do multiple exposures at a time since they're so small, but my software, the Canon Scan Gear uh, scanner driver, if there's too much white or too much black around the image, just like your camera sensor, the scanner is trying to turn that into medium gray and it throws the exposure way off. So I ended up just doing the one at the top. Got kind of a rhythm going. It was rotated to the next frame, set my crop frame in the software, scan it, rotate it, crop it, scan it. So once I kind of got it down, it wasn't bad at all to do. That is about it for this week's camera. A uh, quick program note, my original project, I would more or less make sure a camera was functioning. Um, and then by the end of the week, I would shoot with it, process it. Um, so I didn't always have results. That's why I chopped episodes into two pieces. Part one, the introductory video. Part two, I'd show you what I got that week. Well, I'm not holding to a camera a week. So it's kind of silly to keep doing it in two parts. Um, over on the blog, um, I'll just put the video on the page and then in the same post uh, when I have things to show you. Usually by the time I'm doing the video, I'll just put it in the same blog post. Those of you who watch on YouTube, it won't matter. I'll continue to include uh, a few sample shots from the camera at the end of the video and that's it. So I uh, have a different uh, disc camera I'll probably shoot with. I don't know if I'll take this guy out for a spin. I have four or five rolls. rolls. I have four or five discs to shoot with so uh, Kodak 4000 after I replace the batteries will probably be the next disc camera and I'll see you then.